All right, guys, welcome to my computer. I'm sitting here in my living room and I'm about to take you to our presentation that we're going to go through. It's going to tell you every single thing you need to know about nutrition. Uh, right now you're seeing me and I'm about to put myself in the bottom right corner. So now you see everything you need to know about food. This is a PowerPoint presentation that I have walked all of my clients through or most of them. This is going to tell you everything you need to know about food because it's not 80% nutrition and 20% exercise. It is 100% nutrition and 100% exercise. And what I want to accomplish by doing this is by uh, or actually have you get a lifestyle change that you can stick with it for the rest of your life. So let's get started. First, let me tell you real quick how Straight Up Fitness came about. I was born in Los Angeles. And then when I was eight, I moved to Amsterdam. And then when I was 23 years old, I flew back to Los Angeles. Now, when I flew back, I had my engineering degree. I became an aerospace engineer. That is me in my cubicle. But I got laid off within four months because I really did not like that job. Although I did have really nice socks. Uh, they had, my boss actually did not allow me to have protein powder in my cubicle. Uh, I don't know why. Um, that's my little purple bottle right there and he did not allow me to make protein shakes in there anyway totally off topic this is what my boss looked like um he laid me off after about four months probably because i wasn't doing a good job because uh, i really did not like it when i got laid off i thought hey let me just do ex ex what i've always wanted to do and that is to become a personal trainer so i became a personal trainer i started driving all over the place this was my daily driving routine uh, i had clients left and right I would also be in the water in my Long Beach right there, as you can see. And um, that was really no way to really be a personal trainer. So then I started a little boot camp in the city of Bell Gardens. Well, from Bell Gardens, we moved to Santa Fe Springs. Santa Fe Springs, we eventually moved to Norwalk. Now we have big parties. This is uh, the 2011 Best Couple Award, um, Fernie and Marisol. But uh, anyway, that's how we kind of a quick story of how we grew into what we are right now. So I just wanted to go through that real quick, just so you know what is Straight Up Fitness all about. Now let's get straight to the content of this presentation. How do we get overweight? Let's jump straight into it. Now we don't eat enough quality food. We eat too many calories. We eat too much sugar. We're chronically dehydrated, and we take too much, too many toxins in, and we do not get enough sleep. This is all the stuff that we will be talking about right now. I want you to sit back. I want you to turn off your phone and I want you to pay attention for the next mm, 30 minutes or so. Don't really know how long it's going to take, but I'm going to go through this real quick. You're going to learn a lot. Now, first off, let's talk about Nutrition 101. You probably have heard before about the theory of calories in versus calories out. And it states that if you eat more calories than what you burn off, you gain weight. So your calories out is determined by your age, height, weight, and your activity level. So it's what you burn off. The younger you are, the more calories you burn. The taller you are, the more calories you burn. The uh, heavier you are, the more calories you burn. And the more active you are, the more calories you burn. Now the calories in is what you eat. Now if you eat more calories in than what you burn off, you gain weight. If you eat more calories, if you eat the exact same, you maintain. And if you eat less, you lose weight. So if you want to lose weight, the best thing you can do is calculate how many calories you're putting out and then subtract a little bit, be in a deficit uh, and your calories in. So eat less. Now, here's how you lose fat instead of muscle. Here's how you want to know how much calories you should, sub you should subtract. One pound of fat, 3,500 calories. So if you want to lose one pound of fat per week, you should eat 3,500 calories less than what you burn off per week. Now, how many is that per day? 3,500 divided by seven. 500 calories per day. So if you want to lose one pound of fat per week, calculate your calories out. So take in your age, height, weight, and your activity level. And this is something you can do right below this video in step number two, and then subtract 500 calories from that number. Now, obviously, if you want to lose two pounds of fat per week, make that a thousand calories per day. Now, this is a very popular theory. I'm going through this real quick because it's not entirely true. It doesn't, uh, it's not this simple, let's put it that way, because this is a quote by a famous guy that wrote a very famous book on uh, fat loss and it says, if there existed a mathematical relationship between calories in and calories out, 
Then if you cut your calories from 3,000 to 1,000, you would result in a 60,000 calorie per year deficit. So pretty much you would be burning off 60,000 calories more than what you eat in. Now, with that, if you do that, you would lose 200 pounds of weight in a year. But what if you start off that year weighing 200 pounds? Would you disappear? This is from Rob Fagan, Natural Hormone Enhancement. So what he's trying to say is your body just wants to do one thing, and that's to survive. Now, if you start losing weight and you're losing it at a rapid pace, of course you're going to hit a plateau. So that's why the calories in versus calories out never really holds up. Also, let's say you cal calculate your calories out. If you're not active and you calculate your calories out and then you subtract 500 to 1,000, you might get yourself in like an 800, 1,000 calorie diet. Well, here's the deal, guys. Any diet below 1,200 calories is extremely low. That's, you should never even go below 1,200 calories because that's just really bad for you. Um, and here's why. Here's why extreme low calorie diets are bad. They slow down your metabolism. They make you lose muscle because you're not feeding your muscle to stay alive. Uh, they increase the activity of fat storing enzymes because you're not you're feeding yourself enough. So your body just wants to do one thing, and that's to survive. You're not getting enough nutrients in. Your body's like, well, we got to store all the fat because there's a famine coming. This guy, this girl is not taking care of us. Fourthly, they decrease output of thyroid hormones for the same reason. They increase the chance of rebound weight gain because who can really eat a thousand calories a day for too long? They increase appetite and cravings, obviously, and they decrease your energy and work capacity. So overall, I am not a big fan of low calorie diets. What I like to do is eat nutrient-dense food, and that's what we're going to talk about in this presentation. So I went through that real quick. Um, don't focus too much on the calories. It's good to be in a deficit, but get on a small deficit instead because calories in versus calories out only matters if you're a race car. You drive, 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 you're out of fuel, and you refuel. You drive, 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 you're out of fuel, and you refuel. It doesn't go like that. What matters more is the quality of your food. So in this presentation, I'm going to use a donut and a broccoli as an example. The donut has no nutrients, practically zero. All it does is it has, you know, calories and sugar. Whereas the broccoli has a bunch of nutrients, a bunch of vitamins, a bunch of minerals, calcium even. Um, now, they might even be, if it's a big piece of broccoli, they might even be the same amount of calories. So not all calories are created equal. If all you do is count calories, then you might just eat really bad and get zero nutrients in. So let me, let me show you what happens. Let's say you eat the donut, right? You eat the donut. You're at your office. Coworker comes in, vampire coworker, thinks she's being nice, and she brings a tray full of donuts. She's like, happy Monday, ha, ha, ha. And you're like, oh, I feel guilty. She brought donuts for us. No, I need to eat one. Well, here's what happens when you eat a donut, especially when you're at your office. You eat sugar, because donuts are sugar, the blood sugar rises. Makes sense, right? Anything you eat goes into your blood. Now, then it's your body's uh, duty to get it out of your blood. So then it produces insulin. Insulin is like a big 18-wheeler truck. What it does is it picks up the blood sugar, and it takes it out of your blood, takes the sugar out of your blood, and it wants to transport it to your muscle and your liver. That's in a perfect world, but that's if you're actually being active. And if you're about to work out or if you just worked out, then your muscle and liver actually needs it. But odds are your muscle and liver don't need all that sugar because donuts are, have way too much sugar, just like Coca-Cola does and most food in America, unfortunately. So your muscle and liver will say, no, I don't want it. So your insulin cannot deposit it in your muscle and liver. Instead, your insulin will take that blood sugar or the sugar, take it out of your blood. It has nowhere else to go but store it as fat. So that's how the, ins the blood sugar goes into the insulin. Insulin stores it as fat. Now here's what happens. Let's say you do this on Monday and you do it on Tuesday and you do it on Wednesday. Remember how I said your body just wants to survive? Well, if your body just wants to survive and you keep doing this to your body, well, at a certain point, your body's smart. So your body's response is gonna be, well, shoot, your muscle liver might say, no, no more insulin. I don't want it anymore. This relationship is over. I'm breaking up with you. Or your insulin might say, hey, you know what? Every time you eat, you're raising your blood sugar, and I come to the rescue, and I take it out of your blood. I'm quitting. I'm breaking up with you. 
So one of these two things can happen where either your insulin doesn't show up anymore or your muscle liver just are insulin resistant. Now you might be guessing right now what this is called. This is called diabetes. Now if you have diabetes, that means you have been living on the edge. You have, it's practically already too late. There is medicine to treat you, but here's the good news. If you are on your way to having diabetes, if you eat sugar a lot and if you're not active at all, there are two ways you can prevent yourself from getting diabetes, and that is to eat healthy and exercise. Very simple. Now, that's going to tell you all about it. You're already exercising because you're part of SUF, and uh, we're going to talk about how to eat healthy right now. And here's what happens when you eat lots of sugar. Let's say you eat, eat a bigger donut. You eat a bigger donut, blood sugar rises a lot. Now, your body is always kind of slow to um, react, so it will actually produce a lot of insulin. Usually, it produces too much insulin just to make sure that all that blood sugar gets taken out of blood. Because the sugar needs to get taken out of the blood. Whatever's in the blood, it needs to get taken out. So it'll produce a lot of insulin just to be on the safe side. Now, the insulin will take, all, take out all the blood sugar. Boom. You, get, you crash. That's why after eating a big piece of uh, rice, I'm sorry, a big plate of rice or a big uh, bowl of pasta, uh, if you do, it for, do that for lunch, uh, and then you go back to the office and then one hour later you just want to sleep and then it's just a downward spiral because then all you want is coffee You want even more sugar. You want to eat more. You want to take a nap You know, so the best way to do that is never eat that sugar in the first place. It also causes cravings So here are just some side effects of eating sugar um, this, this whole part is just called sugar is the enemy because sugar is the number one enemy for fat loss nothing serious just stroke and heart attacks Manic depression, cravings, obviously, drowsiness, brain fog, mood swings. Mood swings are the worst, especially if you're a guy and you have a girl that has mood swings. Uh, insomnia, increased fat storage, colon and pancreatic cancer. The American Dietary Association uh, actually did a study on that. And they, it, it, it turns out that people that eat a lot of sugar are at way higher risk of getting colon and pancreatic cancer. And skin problems. And also, it affects your type 2 diabetes, all sorts of bad stuff. So, pretty much, this whole segment was called Sugar is the Enemy. The number one fat or number one enemy for fat loss is sugar. Oh, it also causes hair loss, by the way, which is never good unless you're Bruce Willis, which probably you're not. So, those 10 problems. That's why, let's get to the question. You're going to start losing some weight, right? If you're losing watching this video, this is your time. No excuses. You're going to lose some weight. You're going to get that flat stomach. If you're a guy, you're a girl, you want to get a six-pack, I don't care what you want to do. You're going to do it this time. Are there cheat days? No. Let me tell you why. Because if you're overweight, you used up all your cheat days. That's one. Two, sugar is as addicting as heroin and cocaine. They did a study on that. Sugar is as addicting as hardcore drugs. Now, cheat days, that kind of works like this. You've been good all six days, and then you get to eat bad one day a week. Well, if somebody has been laying off the heroin for six days, are you going to give them heroin for one day a week? No, because heroin is still bad for you. Also, thirdly, what you're going to do is you're going to look forward to your cheat day so much that you're going to be in misery for the whole six days that you're eating clean. So you're not going to enjoy those six days. My whole thing is with the foods that I'm going to lay out for you, you're going to enjoy your food so much that you don't need a cheat day. And a cheat day for you would be like a, a bison burger or something like that. You know, So um, are there cheat days? No, because they're bad for you. Also, the principle of cheat days was invented by people that needed to sell books. Um, if you want to know the truth about fat loss and weight loss and living healthy, it's eat clean and exercise hard. But that's boring. That doesn't sell any books. So if you go to Barnes & Noble, you go to a bookstore, and you have one book that tells you the truth that says, hey, eat clean, exercise hard. And then you have one book that says, eat clean, exercise hard, but you can also have a cheat day. Well, what book's going to sell more? Boom, the cheat day one. So that's how it kind of came, it came about. And they went all extreme. Some books are really extreme. They say you can eat whatever you want. Now, um, this is another thing that I hear a lot. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. Well, if this is the hardest thing you've ever done, then you've had a pretty 
pretty good life, then you might be Paris Hilton. Um, this is not the hardest thing you've ever done. If you're watching this video and you have had kids, then you've already done something that's much harder. Um, if you are a guy and maybe you were in the military, then you have already done something much harder. If you are a girl and you have ever had a psycho boyfriend, then you have already done something much harder. If you are a guy and you have had uh, a psycho girlfriend, then you have already done something much harder. This is not hard, guys. You can do this. Put your mind to it. And we're going to talk about how to put your mind to it in a little bit. So this is not the hardest thing you've ever done. Put that out of your head, unless you're Paris Hilton. All right, so here's how we're going to attack this problem of being overweight. Here's how we're going to do it. We're going to look at the broccoli this time. I'm going to look at that broccoli, and here's what happens when you eat the broccoli. Or here's what, here's what you want to do. If it has been around for 5,000 years, eat it. If it hasn't, then skip it, unless it's a total exception. But if, if you can eat it, kill it, pluck it, or pick it up from the ground, then eat it. See, nutrient-dense foods eliminate cravings and stop hunger signals. So when you eat a donut, it goes down into your stomach. But your stomach is still sending your brain signals like, hey, we need food because there's no nutrients in the donut. Whereas with the broccoli, there's a ton of nutrients in that broccoli. So it's going to go down. It's going to fill your stomach up. Your stomach is immediately going to tell your brain, hey, we're getting fed over here. You can cut the cravings. You can cut that hunger. And that's how it works. So cravings, if you have a craving, it's pretty much already too late. Um, you should have eaten nutrient-dense food in the first place. But if you have a craving, the best thing you can do is eat nutrient-dense food. But that's how cravings come, come about. So uh, eat nutrient-dense foods. They're the only foods that will actually kill your hunger. Now, when it comes to sugar, looking at the donut, here's what happens. Sugar raises insulin. The body stops burning fat and burns carbs instead. Now, we're going to get to the meal plan later on. But in the meal plan, I want you to cut out all carbs for breakfast. And here's why. When you wake up, your body just wants to do one thing, and that's to wake up. So it raises all, it, it activates all systems go, like the Thunderbirds, and it looks for, hey, all right, we're awake now. We need some energy to survive. What do we have? Do we have any sugar? No. Let's use fat for energy then. Oh, no, wait a minute. This person just ate a donut. We got to burn the donut first, and then we can burn the fat. Thing is, that never happens, because all sugar gets stored in fat cells for later use, and that's never so because if you eat high sugar food, you will never ever lose weight. That's just how it is. So have your body attack the fat instead of burning the sugar for fuel. Simply put, no sugar. And that concludes the part that is called sugar's enemy. So with that said, I want to talk about your mindset a little bit. This is a very important part. What's very important is that you find your reason why. Now, most people think that weight loss goes like this. Over time, you lose weight, then you hit your goal weight, and then you're done. Reality is not really like that. It's more something like this. So the problem is when somebody hits a plateau, if you don't have a big enough motivation, then you're going to stop. So ask yourself, what's your goal? You want to lose weight. Okay, great. How much weight do you want to lose? I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, great. You want to lose, why do you want to lose 20 pounds? Oh, because you want to look good in the bathing suit. Okay, great. Why do you want to look good in the bathing suit? Because you want to look good at the beach. Okay, great. Why do you want to look good at the beach? Because my ex-boyfriend is going to be there and I want to wear a two-piece instead of a one-piece. Well, why do you want to impress your ex-boyfriend? Oh, because he broke up with me last year and he cheated on me because he said I wasn't attractive enough. Bam! When you hit a plateau or when things are not going your way, think about your ex-boyfriend and think about walking by him in a two-piece bikini and saying, yeah, this is not yours anymore. So think about that. Find your reason why, all right? If you have a big enough reason why, you will do whatever it takes. It's the why versus the how. Honestly, we all know how to do it, but not everybody has that reason why. That's the difference. So with that said, this is a picture of a donkey. I just want to make sure everybody's still awake. If you're not awake, uh, wake up now, because this picture has nothing to do with the presentation. I actually chose this picture because I saw it online. And I was thinking, why would they ever put a donkey on a boat? All right, so let's move on. The meal plan, this is uh, going to be kind of simple. But let me explain to you how it works. You wake up, you drink 16 ounces of water. Because without water, your body does nothing. Without water, you're dehydrated. When you're dehydrated, your systems do not work. So drink 16 ounces of water. Now, 
popular popular theory is to eat six meals a day. Um, perf in a perfect world, you would because it causes better uh, absorption of your nutrients. It raises your metabolism a little higher. However, I understand if you're, let's say, a nurse or you, you have a busy schedule, you have kids and you have, you know, soccer practice, you might not be able to get six meals a day, a day in. It's not that important. So anywhere from four to six meals per day, that's uh, what you can do. So anywhere from four to six meals. Just make sure that you have a good planning, that you prepare your food in advance. Also, no food or water one hour before bedtime. The only reason for that. Is just to slow down your digestion and also so that you don't use the restroom while you're asleep because sleep is going to be very important. Now, let's talk about water real quick. Water. If you're just 2% dehydrated, you're already slowing your metabolism down. Yeah, you might be reading this thinking to yourself, oh, well, whatever, 2%. What does that mean? Well, that literally means like if you're like this much dehydrated, if you're not like this much, then you're 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 already slowing down your metabolism so it's not a hundred percent so it's like you're buying a corvette but you're only using five or seven cylinders instead of eight so use all the potential you have most of the times when you have a headache when you even have lower back pain you know drink more water four out of five americans are dehydrated so don't look at others and look at oh they're not drinking water um and if your thing is oh well if i drink a lot of water i have to use the restroom yeah here in america we have a sewer system and it, it works so that's what you pay taxes for so drink water all right if you see the fitness models and the bodybuilders what do they all have in common they walk around with big gallon water bottles it's also a great conversation opener all right so three to four liters per day required drink three to four liters per day oh my god i can't drink that well then this is not for you you can drink three four liters per day all right let's talk about breakfast now like i said i want you to cut out the carbs for breakfast the reason why because if you eat protein and healthy fats, you have no sugar, your body's going to have to burn fat for energy instead of uh, the sugar that you're eating. Also, when you eat healthy fats, and we're going to go over the list later, like avocado, grass-fed butter, um, seeds, nuts, almonds, stuff like that, uh, you're telling your body, hey, I'm giving you fat, so you don't need to store fat. Protein, what it does is it repairs your muscle and it keeps your metabolism high. Here's an example. Two, three whole eggs free range pastured with a half a tablespoon of grass fed butter in pan or protein shake with a handful of spinach and a half a tablespoon of peanut butter. Now, I'm going to give you on this website um, meal plans you can download and I'm also going to give you an allowed food list that you can literally choose the foods from. Now, we're going to go over that in a little bit and I'm going to explain to you in a little bit what free range eggs are. So hold on. Lunch is going to be four eight ounces of meat and two cups of green vegetables. That's it. Real simple. You can add some almonds if you want. Some water, obviously drink water. A snack can be a small serving of your lunch or dinner or a protein shake or almonds, nuts, walnuts, a Quest bar. That's only in case of an emergency when you're stuck on the freeway and you have a flat tire and you're on the 105 and there's no good places in the area. Um, a Quest bar is a high protein bar that we sell at SUF. It's made with natural ingredients. It actually has 18 grams of fiber. It's almost too good to be true. So we sell them for $2 each. Uh, no fruit, because fruit has sugar. Even though it's natural sugar, it's still sugar. It still raises your blood sugar up. Dinner's going to be the exact same as your lunch. All right? Dinner's the exact same. Now, here's the approved proteins. Let's talk about this. Free-range chicken. Grass-fed beef. Free-range eggs. All right. Free-range chicken is chicken that was raised in a normal way. Free-range chicken is chicken that was uh, able to walk around and talk to other chickens and walk around and live a happy, happy life. Now, when, a happy, when you have a happy chicken, it produces happy meat with all the nutrients that you need, all the protein, all the fats, everything. Same thing with grass-fed beef. See, back in the 60s, America started getting more and more people in America. The, the population started to rise. Now, what happened was they started cutting down farms and putting residential areas instead. So what happened was there was more people and less farms. So the government and the food industry started thinking, how are we going to feed all these people? What they did is they started feeding cows, corn, and grains instead of grass. Now, the reason why is because if you want to feed a cow grass, you have to let it graze and you have to have a big field. Whereas now they started putting cows in cages and controlling them and 
be feeding them cheap corn and cheap uh, grains just so they can survive and just to save money. Also, they started packing all these cows together really tightly and the only way these cows would survive is by uh, injecting them full of steroids and hormones just to keep them disease free. So that is the beef that you're eating if you're not eating grass-fed beef. This is so important that if you're reading this and you're like, nah, whatever, if you're not going to buy grass-fed beef, then don't eat beef at all. It's that important because grass-fed beef is beef like it's supposed to be. It has conjugated linoleic, linoleic, conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, that burns fat for you. That's what is, what is in grass-fed beef. It has all the B vitamins. It has all the protein. It's beef like it's intended to be. Whereas if you eat the regular beef, the cheap stuff, like the stuff that you get at uh, McDonald's or whatever, Albertsons, and it doesn't say grass-fed beef, that's the mass-produced beef, full of steroids, full of hormones. America is the number one country uh, when it comes to cancer rates, and it's because of the toxins that we get into our body. So same thing goes with chicken. Chicken that has been farmed, that has been kept alive artificially, like Kentucky Fried Chicken is not called Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. It's called KFC because they don't really serve chicken anymore. They actually serve organisms with no beak that are artificially kept alive and they can't even stand on their own feet. So it's not even really chicken and that's what you're eating. So free range chicken is real chicken. So skip the KFC, skip all the drive throughs even El Pollo Loco, all the bad fast food. Eat that, you're gonna get full of, you're gonna be full of toxins. The toxins will go into your body. When you have toxins into your body, they are going to get stored as fat or then your body is going to create extra fat cells to store those toxins in. So it's that important. Now, up next, we got turkey bacon that's nitrate free, venison and bison, and halibut, tilapia, salmon, tuna, lobster, crab, shrimp. Now, venison and bison, bison is my favorite food in the whole entire world because it's full of B vitamins. Um, and actually, it tastes just as good as regular beef. Just get a bison burger. Also, a bison is impossible to inject with steroids or hormones because a bison is a big animal. You're not going to mess with a bison. It's always free range because it's always roaming the, roaming the fields. Now, halibut, tilapia, salmon, tuna, lobster, crab, shrimp. Try to get it wild caught. Same thing goes with fish. If you get farmed fish, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to have the same fats. All right, so that was a big thing about proteins. Um... You might be thinking to yourself, all right, that's expensive. Well, no, it's really not. Maybe it will cost you $30 a month more per person, but it's worth it. Also, where do you get it? Trader Joe's, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Herbies. Not Albertsons, not Ralph's, not Vons. Just don't go there. Also, not the kind of city or something like that. Just try to go to, try to stick to Trader Joe's if you can. If you want to really up your level, go to Whole Foods, but you don't have to, all right? Whole Foods is really whole paycheck. Uh, very, very highly priced. So you can go to Trader Joe's instead. All right, with that said, approved vegetables, all of them, boom, even dandelion greens. So those are the approved vegetables. Approved fruits, if you absolutely must have fruit, Granny Smith apples, any type of berry really, any type of berry, berries are high in antioxidants, and tomatoes, tomatoes is a fruit, tomato is a fruit. So that's what I would recommend. The reason why I recommend Granny Smith apples is because it has soluble fiber, and that's a fiber that gets absorbed into your bloodstream, and it cleans out your arteries, so it's good for your cholesterol. All right, now the approved fats are grass-fed butter. Same story. It's coming from cows that are fed with grass. Coconut oil, better than olive oil, coconut or almond milk. Chia or hemp or pumpkin seeds. Udo's oil is an oil that has been mixed together. It has the perfect combination of omega-3, 6, 9, um, it's something you can buy. You can actually order it online. You can also go to Herbie's and Whole Foods. They have it there too. Just pour it over your food and you're making sure that you get all the essential fats in. Uh, avocado is good and almond butter. Um, olive oil, you can still do olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Just don't cook in it. If you want to cook in it, use butter, grass-fed butter or coconut oil instead. All right, so we're going through this real quick. And I'm going to take a sip of this. Virgil's Zero Black Cherry Cream Soda, which is uh, zero calories, but it's made with stevia. Yes. Mm. And it almost tastes like the real thing. All right, so toxins. Here's the deal. Toxins, when you get a toxin into your body, your body has to take it out of your blood 
and it has to store it somewhere. Well, it can't store toxins in your muscles, so it can't really store it into fat either. So it's actually going to create more fat cells to survive because your body just wants to do one thing, to survive. Remember? Now, it will create more fat cells to store toxins just so they don't go into your bloodstream. I want you to really read this and understand that toxins are very, very bad for you. I'm going to talk to you real quick about how to eliminate these toxins from your body. Toxins come from soda, drive throughs genetically engineered foods, unfiltered water, artificial sweeteners, air fresheners, and vampires. Now, let me explain. Soda is full of artificial sweeteners. Uh, drive throughs is just the worst type of food in the world. I actually, I heard somewhere that Del Taco is like the worst of the worst, but pretty much I've never seen a drive through that has, you know, grass-fed beef. Um, you just know that if you're going through a drive through you're sacrificing your health and the future of your life for uh, saving money and convenience. Um, genetically engineered foods is just, that's like if you have a bunch of apples all together and they all look exactly the same. You know, if it's real, if it's a real apple, a real bunch of apples, you're going to have some rotten apples. You're going to have some that are bigger, some that are smaller. You know, you're not supposed to have huge blueberries, genetically engineered blueberries. You know, blueberries are supposed to be small. So keep it real. Stay GMO free. And that's very hard to do. I'll, I'll give you that. Like it's genetically modified organisms. Uh, it's very hard to stay away from it. I just want you to be aware of it. And I'm also going to tell you real quick how to filter yourself from toxins in a little bit. Unfiltered water. Try to drink alkaline water. I know that's hard, but try to at least get a good filter in your system. Uh, at, at home. Artificial sweeteners, um, there's no really official study done on it, but they're linked to cancer, they're linked, linked to Alzheimer's. That's what a lot of people are saying. And the reason I put air fresheners on there is because no matter what, you are going to get toxins in, unless you stay at home all day and you call your friends, hey, I'm coming over, but I need you to unplug all the air fresheners first because I don't want to get any toxins in. So basically, the only way you would not get any toxins in is if you have no life and no friends and you stay at home all day and wear white gloves and yeah, that's it. So you're going to get toxins in. Last thing is vampires. Those are people that will always bring you down. Those are people that say, ah, you can't do that or people that get jealous of you or people that are just straight up negative. They cause cortisol. They cause stress. Stress causes cortisol. Cortisol raises your... Uh, well, cortisol, when cortisol goes up, it eats muscle and it stores fat. So stay away from negative people. Bad for you. All right. The reason why we're talking about supplements now is because I want to talk about krill oil. If you take krill oil, you will filter out the toxins in your body. Now, just that alone should make you want to buy it. But it's actually the most important supplement you can buy because krill oil what I'm going to get to later does a bunch of things. First, I'm going to tell you also protein powder. That's what you need. Cysis. And that is that. We actually have the ProGrade Google Guardian. You can skip that for now. But let me talk about krill oil first. First off, let me say that supplements. I used to think to myself, nah, I'm not going to sell supplements because I feel like pushing supplements is like being a used car salesman. Uh, if my clients want supplements, they'll come ask me and that's it. But then... You know, I, I did that. I didn't really have any supplements at SUF. And then I saw people go to GNC and get like the the C4 pre-workout or the, the jacked pre-workout or the, the muscle milk protein powder or the, uh, you know, all this stuff that has a ton of artificial sweeteners and toxins. So I was thinking, damn, I got to sell them the right stuff because they might not even know. So krill oil is where I would start. Krill oil is like fish oil. It's just better. The difference between krill oil and fish oil is that krill oil is derived from the bottom of the ocean, whereas fish oil is derived from fish, and fish eat other fish, so you never really know where that fish has been. It could have been a dirty fish. Um, also, cheap fish oil has been contaminated with mercury, arsenic, and lead, so go for the expensive stuff. Now, ours is $37 for uh, blah, 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 a month supply, a three-week supply. Here's what it does. It's filled with omega-3s. It filters out toxins and free radicals. Also, it stabilizes your blood sugar. So you don't get too fat when you eat sugar. So when you eat sugar, your blood sugar doesn't go up all the way. Also, it improves your skin, prevents eye strain, kills joint pain. And I almost forgot this one, but it improves your short-term memory. 
I take like eight pills a day, which is four grams a day. That's how I try to remember all 300 first names of our clients. Um, so this is the most important supplement you'll take. What it also does is it goes against inflammation and it releases fat cells to be burned for fuel. See, when you have fat around the organs, it's very hard to get rid of that fat. Now, when you have an anti-inflammatory thing like krill oil, it get, kind of loosens that fat up. So that's krill oil. Let's talk about protein powder. Protein powder repairs muscle, reduces soreness, suppresses appetite. It's not going to make you bulky. The only thing that makes you bulky is lifting heavy weight and eating lots of sugar. That'll make you bulky right there. Protein powder is most importantly a convenience because... Let's say you cut out the sugar starting today, which means you're going to eat less carbs. Now, if you eat less carbs, you're going to eat more protein and more fat. So let's say you're a girl. You need to eat, I don't know, 130 grams of protein per day. Well, in a perfect world, 130 grams of protein is like four pieces of chicken breast, something like that. Well, four pieces of chicken breast, that's a lot of chicken. So you'll be chewing all day long. That's where protein powder comes in. Take the protein shake or mix the protein powder with almond milk or whatever. Drink that protein shake and it's a convenient way of getting your protein powder in. Now you might be asking yourself, isn't protein powder a fake food? Yes, it is. And that's why you need a clean one. Now at SUF, we sell the very, very best protein powder in the world. It's called Way Natural USA. It is grass fed, no artificial sweeteners, no chemicals, nothing, 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 nothing. It is straight up the best the absolute best it's a little bit more expensive but oh my goodness it's the best in the world it does not compare it's actually cold processed too it makes you look good all right so that's what i recommend now sisus is a uh, joint joint support formula um when you have when you're starting to work out you have worked out a long time your joints might start hurting and everybody will tell you take glucosamine but regular glucosamine takes forever to kick in sisus is derived from a grape plant, there's a great extract from a grape plant and from Brazil, and it rebuilds tendons, ligaments, cartilage, joints, and muscle. Everybody that I have recommended scissors to, they all love it. It takes care of your bad knees, of your aching joints. It is just overall awesome. All right, now this is the one that I want to skip real quick because I'm still not sure whether we're going to sell it, but what it does is it stabilizes your blood sugar. It's a prograde glucogardian. It controls your blood sugar levels, improves insulin sensitivity, kills insulin resistance, and slows digestion of starches. Um, skip that for now. Let's talk about sleep. I hope you're still with me. Raise your hand if you're still with me. I can't see that because I'm recording it right now, but still. Um, sleep. Back in 1970, something somewhere in the 70s, in Sweden, they did a study. They had 20 people. They gave them an... Uh, exercise program and nutrition program and they had 20 more people and they got the exact same exercise program the exact same nutrition program and the only difference between both groups of 20 people was that first group slept eight hours a night and the second group slept seven and a half hours a night all right so i hope that makes sense two groups were on a weight loss plan just like you one group received received 30 minutes less sleep than the other so seven and a half versus eight now, that group that slept eight hours, that slept 30 minutes more, they burned 56% more fat. Sleep is important because sleep is when you build muscle. Sleep is when you burn fat. And the quality of mind of your sleep is a new modern status symbol. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care what rims you have, what watch you're wearing around your arm. Nobody cares. You know what's really cool is when you're able to take a nap during the day. That's the new modern status symbol right there. So seven to nine quality hours required. Try to sleep in a pitch black room. That's how you do it. Also, what you want to do is try to put your phone on airplane mode and preload your supplements. Now, preload your supplements means if you're going to take, let's say, krill oil, take it about two hours before you sleep so you don't have to use the restroom from drinking all that water. Also, put your phone on airplane mode because when your phone is not on airplane mode, um, you have all this... Uh, communication going on, this electromagnetic frequency, and that messes with your brain waves. Now, if you're wondering, does my alarm still work? Yes, everything still works except for receiving text messages or calls. And you know, you shouldn't get text messages at 2 a.m. anyway. If you do, then it's probably bad news or it leads to bad decisions. So put your phone in airplane mode, 
Also, avoid any screens 60 minutes pre-bedtime. When you look at your iPhone or your smartphone, there's this little, there's a type of light that's in the screen. It's, it's kind of like a blue light. What it does is it activates a part of your brain that says, go, go, go. So even though if you're super tired and you've been working all day and you, you worked out and all you want to do is go to bed, you are really tired. And then you're in bed and you think, oh, let me check to see what people are up to on Instagram. Let me look at all these fake Photoshop pictures on Instagram. I'm just kidding. But let me just look on Instagram real quick or whatever, Facebook, or let me check my email. When you look at that screen, you're telling your body, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. So even though you want to go to sleep, you start thinking. And you just, it's like you want to go to sleep, but your body can't stop thinking. It's because of your phone. Very hard to do. Just cut out the screen 60 minutes pre-bedtime. All right? So... Let me talk about exercise. So all that stuff was all the food stuff, all the sleep, all the toxins. That's all the stuff you need to do. Now, on this website, below this video, you're going to see everything, all the resources that you need, the allowed food list, the meal plans, the calorie calculator. Everything you need is on this website. But let me tell you a little bit about the exercise. At SUF, we do 45-minute sessions. Now, what they do is they accelerate your fat loss. They sculpt your body by building muscle, Okay. So in the exercise, you're supposed to build muscle. Cardio does not burn fat. The way you eat burns fat. So you train to build muscle, you eat to burn the fat. Let me repeat that real quick. Cardio does not burn fat. The way you eat burns fat. When you eat sugar, your body will burn sugar. When you eat no sugar, your body will burn fat. Very, very easy. Now. You can burn more calories by working out, but you're not going to burn fat. You're just going to burn calories. Now, those calories can come from muscle. They can come from fat, but it depends on how you eat, all right? You can never out-train a bad diet, never. So if you're doing good Monday through Friday and then you go to a Cheesecake Factory on Saturday, you will never, ever lose weight. And you might get upset at this, but it's the truth. I don't want to lie to you and say like, oh, yeah, you can eat whatever you want. And, you know, our workouts are so good. You can eat whatever you want. No, no, no. It's always going to be the same. You know, you, even if this doesn't sound right for you and you feel like, oh, I'm going to try something else instead, you're going to go to another gym and they're going to tell you the, well, they might not even tell you the exact same thing, but this is the truth. You can never out-train a bad diet. One of my favorite videos on YouTube is uh, like Craig Ballantyne. And he, uh, he is in a video of him drinking a Frappuccino. And then his friend is doing kettlebell swings, which is a very hard exercise. And underneath them is a calorie counter on how much calories uh, one, the frappuccino drinker has been gain, gaining and how many calories the kettlebell swinger has been losing. So within about five minutes, the frappuccino was like 1,200 calories, whereas the guy has been doing kettlebell swings for five minutes straight and he burned like 150 calories. So you can never out-train a bad diet. It's all in your nutrition. So we used to say 80% nutrition, 20% exercise. I used to say that just to emphasize the fact that nutrition is important. But it's really not like that. So 100% nutrition and 100% exercise. Nutrition is how you lose fat. Exercise is how you sculpt your body. It's the only way to look at it, guys. You got to eat right. If you're not losing weight, you're not eating right. So here's what we do at SUF. We transform your body through exercise. And we burn fat through nutrition. So... If you are still watching this right here, then I want to congratulate you. You're really awesome. Here's uh, Jennifer Vu. Uh, she lost 20 pounds in six weeks because she ate right. She stopped eating all that, whatever that is on her plate and to the left, the Bud Light and everything. Here's Eric Gutierrez. He stopped drinking whatever he was drinking to the left. Lost over 20 pounds in six weeks. Now, if you're still watching this right now, then I want to thank you for being awesome. Um... I want you to absorb this information. If you want to go through this presentation again, feel free. And, um, you know, for now, what I recommend you do is scroll down, uh, calculate your calories, start playing around with the calorie calculator. Uh, then you can download a meal plan. You can print out that meal plan, hang it on your fridge and just stick to that. Or what you can also do, if you don't want to stick to a strict meal plan, just download the allowed food list. Allowed food list with all the foods that you can eat. It's kind of the same thing as what we had in the presentation, but you can just print it out. Or if you are on your smartphone, you can actually just click on the document and you can save it on your uh, smartphone. If it's an iPhone, you can save it to iBooks and you can always have it. So let's say you're at the grocery store, you can just look through that. Uh, I also made you a restaurant guide. That's really, really cool. I mean, next time you go out to eat, just go to one of those restaurants and you will 
always be good. Um, then we also have a travel workout guide. So if you ever go out of town, you can't make it in for a while. There's a workout routine, a three-day workout routine for what you can do when you're in Vegas because they have gyms in Vegas too uh, or when you're just traveling. Then we also have vegetarian meal plans and also at the bar. Oh, we also have a SUF cardio, by the way. If you ever want to work out on your own, you don't feel like coming to SUF because you've been going like five days a week or it's Sunday or something and you want to do a little cardio session, I wrote some cardio workouts for you. Um, also, I wrote a frequently asked questions section. That's all the way at the bottom of this section or of, of this website. It has all the questions that I get practically every day and they're answered for you either through uh, text or video. So with that said, thank you so much for going through this presentation with me. I hope it, uh, I hope it opens your eyes up a little bit and uh, good luck with everything with your goals. All right, set big goals because nothing big was achieved being realistic. Just set unrealistic goals. And remember, there are no unrealistic goals. There are only unrealistic deadlines. All right. Have an awesome day.